Look at me! I'm doing a movie that's actually current! Godforsaken premiered on the Terror Films YouTube channel March 25th, just two days ago. And it will remain there until April 8th, 2022. And I'll tell you right now, it's worth checking out. What starts as a common funeral quickly descends into chaos when the body of Lisa Harris, played by Melly Rendau, comes back to life. Her mother is the first to praise the Lord for her return, only to look into her eyes and announce in horror that whatever this thing is, it is not her daughter. It's all told from the perspective of Chad Taylor, played by Chad Taylor, an amateur documentary filmmaker present at the funeral, who decides to make Lisa the subject of what he hopes will be his career-making debut. For several days, Lisa remains on the run, until she comes back and seems to perform a miracle, healing the legs of a man in a wheelchair. This miracle is followed by many others, as Chad and his team document the town's descent into the religious fervor, with some believing Lisa is an avatar of God himself. It is doubtless a presence has descended upon the town, but whether it's God or something else remains to be seen. This film held my attention to the end, even as I figured out exactly where it was going. I'm sad to say it's not a very original story, the best way to put it is... It's a collage of aspects, plot points and cliches that are pretty familiar for most horror fans. It's a horror movie where a woman comes back from the dead and starts performing miracles. You ask yourself where that may lead, I'm pretty sure you'll have figured out where the movie is going with your first few guesses. But that doesn't make it bad. It's written and directed by Ali Akbar Akbar Kamal, and even though it's only his second feature film, I sense a strong talent in the making. For one, there is an obvious sense of dread to the situation from the very start, where clearly there is something bestial about Lisa, who acts more like a zombie than a savior, but people are willing to look past it to partake in her miracles, and for every miracle she performs, people only descend further into religious mania. It spreads like a wildfire across town, where everyone except the camera team falls under her spell and are left the only ones aware of the danger everyone is in. You know something bad is coming, you see everyone else grow completely deluded and blind to the monster at the center of it, and you can't stop it because reason has ceased. All you can do is a wait for the coming bloodbath. And speaking of lunacy, the very first character to be healed by Lisa is Chris Laskin, played by Chris Kelly. He is by far my favorite character. Every time he is on screen I am just laughing because he is hilarious whatever he does. Funny thing, he does look like the bastard child of Dylan Moran and Jimmy Carr and... I don't know what to do with that, but from the moment he squeals in glee at Lisa rising from the dead to eventually meeting his fate, I just had the best time. He swings between sarcastic asshole and insane believer, and clearly he's having the time of his life doing this, and I am just swept along. That said, most of the other characters are pretty boring in comparison. It's not that nothing is done with them, Chad for example goes through a pretty significant tragedy, but all of it is played fairly straight, and it's just not as entertaining. The main draw of the movie is the spectacle, which, when it kicks off, is pretty solid. I heard Kamal wanted the movie to be horrific and energetic, like an action film, and I think there's too many lulls in the pace for that, but there is a lot of running from possessed hordes and gun-toting violence that, if horror is an aesthetic more than experience, will leave you pretty satisfied. It's worth acknowledging Godforsaken bears more than a few similarities to The Unholy from 2021. Both revolves around a young girl who performs miracles, whipping people into a god-loving lunacy with evil forces at the center of it. Before you go calling ripoff though, Godforsaken was released in 2022, but it was finished in 2020. I'm not sure why distribution took so long, but Godforsaken technically came first. That said, it turns out The Unholy is actually based on a book called Shrine by James Herbert, and it began production in 2018. That makes me suspect Godforsaken may be a mockbuster, but I find it more likely Kamal and Raimi read the same book and just took inspiration from it, because Godforsaken is its own movie. If it is a mockbuster quickly churned out to capitalize on the hype surrounding The Unholy, it's among the most impressive ones I've seen. 
Kamal's skill as a director doesn't just extend to how the scenes play out. It was filmed on location in Harriston, Ontario, which is also the hometown of Chad Taylor. Most of the background characters are local residents helping out with the film. I just have this vision of the town coming together to get on the silver screen and making this tiny production work. I don't know if they were compensated for their work, but either way Kamal managed to work in a surprising number of people for such a small production, which does make the events feel more real, sans the occasional crappy makeup. All of that said, there is the occasional scene that is just awkward to sit through, and more than once did I find myself about to scream IDIOTS at the screen, but it wasn't enough to draw the attention away from the overall experience. Godforsaken is a pretty by the numbers horror film. There is a sense of everything having been seen before, but it doesn't feel lazy or uninspired. Kamal clearly had a vision of what he wanted the film to be, and more surprisingly, he actually seemed to know how to do it. The main thing that hurts it is a lack of originality, and it's not very frightening. But I had a good time while watching it, so much so I put away my chips so I could focus on the movie. I can't berate a movie that manages to do that, and all of this balanced against one another, I sentence Godforsaken to a 7 on a scale of 11.